Hey horror fans, welcome back to room 237. Uh, one, I hope you like my new opening and closing title cards. Two, I actually remember to get to my plugs first. <laughs> um, first, go over to my thank you to 500 sub video. That's the new Q&A. Go ahead and leave your questions in the comments on that video. I'll get to them next weekend. Two, if you haven't already, go join the uh, room 237's Facebook group. And three, go check out the Room 237's Patreon. Check out the tiers and see if you'd like to be a patron. If so, they'd be greatly appreciated. If not, thank you all the same. But I spent a while trying to figure out how to get those title cards to work, so I, I, I hope you enjoy them. I know with Room 237, you think I sh should go with something shining, but I think those are public domain, and I don't really have to worry about uh, copyright. But anyway, <clears throat> the review for this video is another Bela Lugosi film, but it is not part of this collection. I talked about it in my review about that collection, and I think it should be in there. It's 1932's Murders in the Rue Morgue, which does star Bela Lugosi. He is the villain, and this came out... A year after Dracula, same year as White Zombie. And so, like, this really helped solidify Bela Lugosi as a very phantom-esque type character. Like, that sort of villain. I think it's really what helped get him typecasted. This was released through uh, a Universal, which really sucks why you never really see it. I don't know if it's on any of the new four-pack Blu-rays of Universal. I would love there to be like a 30-film box set of horror films aside from the monster films of Universal. I'm not sure why this one never took off like, like other Universal films. Because I really enjoyed it. Of course, it's based on the Edgar Allan Poe story. But it is done more in a style like German Expressionist which, of course, I am a huge fan of. Drooled on myself. Wow. Um, Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and Nosferatu are easily in my top 15 favorite films of all time. Uh, loved Begotten, even though, you know, that's way later. Um, of course. It, it was directed by Robert Flory, who, I'm not sure what else he's directed. I, I think this might actually be his only horror film. But anyway, uh, it also stars Sidney Fox. Sidney Fox is our uh, uh, dame of the film, I guess. Uh, Mademoiselle Camille and Leon Ames plays her fiance, love interest, uh, Pierre Pierre Dupin. I just watched it and I already forgot how the how they pr pronounce names. It takes place in France, uh, eighteen forty five. Um. Uh, and actually, Lugosi and Flory. Uh, decided to do this after they were both dropped from Frankenstein. This this would have been the team that brought us Frankenstein had Whale and Karloff not been able to make it. And it had a lower budget, but then Frankenstein was a huge hit. So then this, this one got a bigger budget. And they were able to um, add scenes, reshoot some scenes. And I, I guess it got negative reviews um, on the acting and, and the narrative, which, yeah, a lot of the acting is overacting, but, I mean, this is 1931. Talkies have only been around for the previous year and this year. Uh, I think people were still getting used to not being as theatrical with their acting as they had to in silent films. 
of course the film the film centers around this uh, doctor doctor a, a miracle spe it's spelt like miracle with a k he's played by Lugosi he's a mad scientist and he has this um, it's like this circus show which and the, also what I meant to say along with German expressionists specifically cabinet of Dr. Caligari there's a lot of parallels because he does you know run this sort of circus show his assistant is the real monster of the film which is a gorilla instead of you know a sleepwalker and interesting about this Lugosi doesn't have his slicked back hair it's really bushy and he's got lipstick and a, a unibrow but he brings that Dracula kind of sinister smile and uh, demeanor Lugosi is great at this he really is and he abducts these young women straps them to I can't I think it's called a rack that wooden X that you tie people to and injects them with ape blood um, in order to create a mate for him for uh, Eric his sideshow ape but of course um, they keep d but he has to find one with pure blood and also it will show sort of the missing link or how close we are to primates it, it kind of goes all over the place with it uh, I will say the torture scenes for 1931 again this was pre-code so there really was no rating system at this time and the those torture scenes for 1931 are I mean, it's not really graphic, but you know, you really put yourself in 1931. Think about what you've seen at that time. I mean, women are screaming tied to this thing. Lugosi is like holding them and like putting like a knife up to them and like injecting them, getting real close to their face. Sure, it's not hostile, but <laughs> I mean, back then, uh, I was like, wow, this is pretty extreme for back then. And then, of course, we follow uh, the young Pierre, who's a medical student and a, 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 a detective. I'm sorry, I'm stuttering. He was credited as Leon Wakoff in this film. Uh, I guess it was a consolidated character. But and his fiance Camille, played by Sidney Fox. It, in the role of an original character in the short story. Okay. And their friends, Paul and his girl, a, a mignette, played by Burt Roach and Edna Marion. She was a silent film actress, actually. This was her final film role. Uh, she she must have uh, retired because she lived until 1957. And yeah, there are there's like some scenes that are kind of goofy, like they're watching this sort of um, uh, I don't know if you call them flapper girls, but they're kind of just like, hey, you want to dance like that for me? And it's really silly. I guess you could also say this was like the start of the guy in an ape suit horror films because you had this, then you had the ape man, you had the gorilla, and Bela Lugosi meets a Brooklyn gorilla. <laughs> All four of which have Bela Lugosi in it. This one does look the most kind of ridiculous. It, it does look very silly. The funny thing is, though, when they do up-close shots, it's a real chimp. I don't know what kind of chimp it is. It's, it's, 
whatever kind of sort of bald chip that Rocco is in, or Rocco, Rocket is in the new Planet of the Apes films. <clears throat> and so then, then they go to this show where they see Lugosi, they see Eric, and... You know, of course, Lugosi and, and Eric are not really smitten, but they're taken by Camille's beauty. And it's like, she will be the one. Sort of like in Caligari. So he invites them to come up and meet Eric, which Eric grabs her bonnet, kind of sniffs it, does whatever. And then he, when... Pierre tries to get it back. Eric tries to strangle him, and he—he's in his cage. <laughs> also, like German expressionists, you get a shot like this that is obviously a reference to Nosferatu, and <clears throat> he had uh, Lugosi has this other servant. Janos, played by Noble Johnson, to follow her. So now he's he's pretty much pursuing her through the whole film. And he, you know, his victims are found. Like, it's like a, the first one we see is like a prostitute. She's found in the river. And, you know, Lugosi keeps appro approaching Camille to get her to come meet Eric again. She's... She kind of keeps refusing. He sends Eric to kidnap her. Which, we get this long scene of her screaming and him like running through the building. There's another scene where these guys are talking about that they, they all heard perpetrators speak a language and they're all arguing about what language it was. There is a really interesting scene where Camille is on a swing and the camera is like in front of her. So the, the camera is really going like this. Pretty inventive, especially for the time. So it really does employ a lot of German expressionist uh, tropes. And of course, Eric does get a hold of Cam uh, Camille and he carries her up to the top of a building like in Dr. Caligari, but even more so, the following year we got King Kong, which is another universal film. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure King Kong is. And, it, you know, Pierre's able to get up there, shoot him, and he fall. He gets shot and he falls. And sort of like uh, the ape man, the the ape, Eric turns on Lugosi and strangles him. <clears throat> I mean, it, it's an hour short. There's not a whole lot to say plot wise. It is on YouTube, and I have to say this is one of my favorite Bela Lugosi films. I. I ha do I like it as much as Dracula? Absolutely not. White Zombie, maybe. Definitely liked it more than The Ape Man, One Body Too Many. Uh, definitely more than The Gorilla. More than The Invisible Ghost. It, it's just a shame it wasn't put uh, on that collection. Uh, I'm just reading about the uh, production of it. A lot of the stuff they re-added after the budget was... The, more was added to the budget for reshoots. Was stuff for the first half of the film. 
the initial budget was 130,000 it was cut to 90,000 which I'm, even back then I'm sure that was really cheap <clears throat> um They, there was a guy named John Houston who rewrote the dialogue on the set because they didn't think they could really bring Poe's prose <clears throat> uh, to life on film. So even that's another thing that was criticized along with the narrative was because 19th century, 19th century grammar mixed with you know, modern speech. And I mean, yeah, it is kind of all over the place. Um, it does draw heavily, not just from German expressionist type of film, but Dr. Caligari itself, which is fine because I absolutely love Dr. Caligari to death. I love that film dearly. And... But also there's like that shot of the shadow with her in bed from, from Nosferatu. It, it does a good job with it. Uh, Lugosi is very creepy in it. You know, he's a lot like his signature Dracula or white, uh, I almost said white knight, white zombie type role. Probably what got him typecast as the vampiric phantom type characters. Yeah, the ape suit does look silly. It is kind of silly how they have an obvious ape suit to the up close of a real chimp. But I mean, it's 1931. It is a straightforward horror film. It's based on Edgar Allan Poe. You, you gotta love that. I I can say that I enjoyed this film. I I really did. It it probably probably is one of my. Uh, Wow, I am stuttering. I cannot talk tonight. Wow. Is one of my top favorite Lugosi films. But there's not too much to say about it because it is an hour short. So, and it is on YouTube. Definitely recommend it. Definitely more so than the other ones that I've done recently. But anyway, so yeah. I guess that's it for that. Uh, thank you for watching.